I'm, my kids always make fun of me because I'm bald, so my, my whole head is covered with sweat. And they come over and wipe my head. They're like, look at you. You're so gross. And they, how old are your kids? Uh, the youngest ones are eight and ten. And you have you have uh, how many? Three. I have three. three. All, three. all daughters. All daughters. I have a you know, 22 year old, a 10 year old, and an eight year old. You'll live longer uh, with daughters. If you, really? if you, if you plot uh, dad's survival on the y axis and fraction of female children on the x axis, uh, survival is slightly longer for men who have higher fraction of daughters as children. I think it's because boys drive you to your fucking grave because they're so goddamn crazy. There's lots of theories as to why it happens, but I think, and that is in fact one of them. It's framed a bit more scientifically than that, but. Well, but my, that's the basic theory. My ten-year-old is a maniac. My ten-year-old yeah. daughter, and I just imagine if she was a boy, I'd be terrified that she'd yes. be d just lighting things on fire, yes. and blowing up buildings. And, yes. Yeah. Boys are a problem. It can know? be. But I mean, are, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think. Um, you know, I think it's. Um, I think. Um, the. the uh, well, I mean, we could get onto the whole uh, gender issue. I'm not sure we want to, but I think. Um, Boys are responsible. Let's talk about chimpanzees. It's easier. Okay. Male chimps uh, do most of the violence. About ninety-five percent of the violence in murders are committed by male chimpanzees, and most of the victims are males. Mm. And um, you know, I think it's there is no doubt that um, biology plays a very important role in male proclivity to violence. For example, sure. So they are trouble. Yeah. So boys can be a problem that way. And yeah. And I think the many ways in which a, uh, society are uh, cultural traits that we invent, their purpose is to uh, shape and guide those tendencies to violence to kind of mitigate them. Sure. But we don't just need, again, going back to the book, sir, sir, yeah, <laughs> we, don't, do. we don't just need, uh, we don't just use culture for that purpose. There, are, There's an argument in the book that we humans have, have domesticated ourselves. So if you look at, if you compare... Uh, Dogs to wolves and domesticated cats to wild cats from which they descended or uh, guinea pigs to the wild guinea pigs from which they descended or or horses to uh, to the wild horses to which they descended. If you again and again, you compare these couplets, these pairs, you find that the domesticated version of these animals are much more placid, much more peaceful. They also tend to have floppy ears. They have piebald fur. So guinea pigs and dogs and cows all have splotchy black, white, and brown fur. Why is that? The animals from which they evolved didn't have those the kind of splotchiness. So, uh, and they become much more uh, peaceful. If you compare human beings, and but they had a, a they, th those animals were domesticated by humans. Like I deliberately allowed the reproduction of this member of the litter and not that member because this member was 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 nicer. And so across time, we evolve a more uh, a domesticated version of the ancestral species. So we get you know we get my miniature dachshund from a wolf, like the woman, like the kind of things that were photographed out in your studio mm. here. Crazy transition. Uh, now, if you look at humans and you compare us to uh, to the the non to our ancestors or to other primates, for all the world, it looks like we have been domesticated. We are more peaceful and placid. We have sex outside non reproductive sex. This is another thing. So these domesticated animals will have sex uh, even when it's not time to reproduce. Uh, we uh, we. Um, uh, we, our tails, we don't have tails anymore, but our tails have, get shortened. There are all these features that we have, these, these behavioral qualities and these physical properties that we have. Are, 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 we get a feminization of our faces. Our jaws become smaller. Like if you look at, you compare uh, these domesticated animals to their non-domesticated ancestors, the domesticated versions are less violent. So we lose a lot of the traits that physical and and uh, um, psychological traits associated with violence. But there was no one that domesticated us. So the theory is, the question is, how? How did that happen? And one of the theories that's discussed in, in, uh, in Blueprint, and that's advanced by other scientists, this is not my work, is that we self-domesticated. And that what happened over the century, over the millennia, over millions of years, is that weaker individuals in our groups when one individual became too autocratic and too violent and too powerful, they banded together and killed that guy. And so over time, we were killing the more violent members of our species, mm. weeding out those people. And therefore, the gene pool changed across time, and we self-domesticated. We are more peaceful today 
than we would have been because we domesticated ourselves. And this is one of the arguments that's also made to help explain the origins of goodness, actually. And the origins of cooperation, because yes. it would take a few good yes. people to kill the bad person yes. that's running everything that's evil. Correct. Yeah. That's exactly right. Recreational sex does occur in bonobos, which is yes. really weird, isn't it? Because yes. they're so similar to regular chimps. Yes, but they're not the same species. Yeah. They also have homosexual sex. Uh, they use sex uh, to make up. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, it, it's yeah, they're very uh, licentious uh, species. That's exactly right. And 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 bonobos are felt to be a self-domesticated chimpanzee. So the mm. simil so bonobos are to chimps as uh, as let's say dogs are to wolves. And but there was uh, the dogs we domesticated. The bonobos self-domesticated is the theory. Do they know why or how? Well, the theory is that they did it, like we were saying, by weeding out, killing mm -hmm. the more aggressive members. There was What we know must have happened is that the nicer guys must have been able to have more offspring. So the gene pool changed over time because of the differential success of the, of the, of the nicer guys. Now, people have looked at this even in human societies. They've looked, for instance, there's a study I talk about in the book of different pathways to reproductive success amongst the Tsimani, which is a group in Amazonia. And other societies are similar. So you can either be like big and strong or you can be charismatic and have useful knowledge. In both ways, you have more children. Mm. Um, so there are these competing ways uh, in our species of enhancing your reproductive fitness. Are you aware of Sapolsky's work yes. with um, baboons? Uh -huh. That's a fascinating case, mm -hmm. right? Because they were studying baboons in Africa that would eat from human garbage, and a, a bunch of them got sick and died. And it turns out that the most violent and ruthless of them got sick and died, and it changed the entire culture of the baboon tribe. Oh, I don't know that story. Oh, that's it's interesting. a fascinating one. They, they started grooming each other and being kind to each other. Oh, my they, God. Yeah, that's a good yeah. example. But there was and an it accidental. Lasted. It yes. was an accidental. It was an accidental, yeah. but it lasted for generations. Yes. And when he returned to study them, he found that they were still this different kind of oh, baboon tribe. Oh, I think I tribe. did read about this a little bit. Yeah. I'm doing a shitty job, I'm sure, of explaining it, but I'm, I no, love I that think guy. You have the, I'm yes. so fascinated yeah, by yeah, that yeah. guy's work. Yes, he's very impressive. And uh, I know the, I, I, I'm, uh, now that you're reminding me, I'm a little familiar with that particular study. I didn't know that it started with garbage, however, that, yeah. but it was a coincidental ex extermination of the more violent members of the troop. Yes. Yeah, so they were removed from the gene pool. And it changed the entire culture to the point where generations later, they were still using this more peaceful ways peaceful, of, yeah, yes, yes. More, yeah, more kind. Well, it didn't just change the culture. It, it may have changed the culture, but it, it appears we're arguing that to have changed the, the gene pool, right? Yes. It's like an evolutionary pressure that's been applied. So you have, you know, big dogs and small dogs. You don't allow the big ones to reproduce. You just reproduce the small ones. Yeah, You get small dogs in the end. 